For two generations, the Prodoa Axia has marked the entry level into the Prodoa lineup. They have built a reputation for reliability and dependability, so much so that this is the car of choice for driving schools around the country. One small problem though, with this new platform and the new updated powertrain and so on, the new Axia actually overlaps with the larger and more premium Prodoa Myvi. And so it begs the question, does it justify that price increase? Or has Prodoa slightly missed the mark by pushing this car more upmarket and ending up leaving a few buyers without a new car? Before we get into it, be sure to hit subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified every time we make a new upload. But ladies and gentlemen, this is our review of the 2023 Prodoa Axia. Now, before we talk about the Axia, we actually have to talk about Volkswagen. Because you see, when Volkswagen introduced the Golf, it was designed to replace the Beetle. And then the Golf got so much larger to the point where they had to introduce a Polo. And the thing about Prodoa is that when they first introduced the Myvi, they thought that it would be a niche hatchback product. But it's become so incredibly popular that they only needed to have a car to slot beneath it in order to entice slightly more price sensitive buyers. And that's exactly what the Axia is. This is the Malaysian Volkswagen Polo, which is part of the reason why it looks the way it does. Because the more I look at it, the more it reminds me of the current generation Polo that we don't get in this country. That said, however, the design is very much Prodoa. So at the front, you get a very angry looking X face with the Prodoa corporate face across and that grille is flanked on this AV model by full LED headlights replete with the LED positioning light and LED indicators. Now, the lights that you see down there are not fog lights. Those are actually the daytime running lights, very reminiscent of what we used to get in the previous generation Honda Jazz. But Overall, one of the biggest factors or one of the biggest features of this car that everybody seems to be remarking on is the fact that the face of this car is very, very flat. In fact, from the profile, there is no distinguishable feature on the front end because it just sort of chops off there, which I think is uh, kind of interesting. And yet, despite this rather blocky shape, the Axia is surprisingly aerodynamic, which is why it has managed EEV certification once again. Now, moving down the side, the other disappointment with this generation is that we still get the same alloy wheel design from before. Now, however, they are wrapped in Toyo Proxxas CR1 tyres, which I think is quite commendable given the fact that a lot of economy cars in this segment have moved to cheaper rubber, like Atlas, for example. And it is from the side where you notice that actually the Axia is not that small anymore. It rides on the new Daihatsu New Global Architecture, or DNGA, and as a result, the wheelbase has grown to a point where it's even longer than what you get from the Myvi. In fact, in terms of dimensions, the Axia has grown in almost every measurable way, except in height, where it's gotten a little bit lower without sacrificing headroom. And at the rear, it's much the same as the front, where once again, it looks like it's been sort of driven against a wall so it's ended up very flat. It looks a little bit like uh, Changi's Runway 2. Now in terms of the rear end, as far as I'm concerned the design, despite that flatness, does look rather nice and this nice tapering rear windscreen does make it look again a little bit more like a polo. Now because this is the AV model we actually get a contrast surround around the number plate and we get this tiny little spoiler which I feel really completes the rear end of this car. Lower grade models get that black bit in body color which I think is a bit strange and they don't get the spoiler which makes the car look a little naked. Now the thing about the Axia is that it also comes with keyless entry and go which means on the driver's door you now get a touch type sensor to unlock the car and back here you also get a little rubber button in order to open the boot and at least least that opening is now integrated into the design it's not a tack on like the previous Proto Axia. Now behind that tailgate sits a rather deep boot. This is not as big as a Myvi, let me make that very plain. However, the boot floor is quite low which leads to a rather sizable lip about that deep. But the overall space is very useful. It is wide 
and it's deep, which means you can put quite a lot of stuff back here. In fact, if you load up this car with four people, you can get all their luggage in here without a problem. That said, however, you can, of course, fold the rear seats in order to create even more space, but there is a little bit of a lip in case you're trying to load longer items. But that said, because of the load lip here, I reckon you could just slide those longer items all the way without interacting with that lip at all. Now, in terms of rear features, I am quite disappointed by the fact that there is no light in here because it can get quite dark, especially when you take into account the fact that you have this fixed rear parcel shelf, which means that the cabin light is then blocked from the boot. So if you're trying to take things out at night, um, I, I certainly hope you know what they look like because if you're trying to look for any sort of visual identification, you are going to be struggling. But at the very least, the boot lid sounds rather reassuring when you close it. And that same sense of reassurance extends to the interior because it is reassuringly upmarket. This dash design, angled slightly towards the driver, is rather sophisticated. And although the materials are all hard-touch, hard-wearing plastics, at the very least, the choice of materials and the choice of textures does sort of elevate the experience ever so slightly. You get a floating center touchscreen now, which comes with Mirror Link, which is a sort of screen mirroring system, although I haven't been able to get that work to work with my phone. And it is disappointing that we didn't get the same head unit as we got in the Prodoa Alza because then we'd have Android Auto, but we don't. We do at least get the Alza's HVAC controls, which are all digital, replete with the memory one and memory two function. But rather oddly, Prodoa has chosen to emit the rear window defogger. Now, Prodoa says that it's because nobody really uses it, but I disagree because my rear windows fog up all the time as a result of me choosing to leave the air conditioning on Arctic mode. And not having that means I have to use the rear wiper a little bit more often than I like. And it leaves that weird mark on the windscreen, which I'm not really a big fan of. But anyway, enough about my eccentricities. Going back to it, we get the same steering wheel that we see in all modern Pro Duas, which is nicely leather wrapped in this AV model with all the buttons that you want here. Ahead of that sits a digital instrument cluster where you have a variety of different modes and different designs to choose from and all the information is displayed in a very easy and very logical manner and it's very easy to manipulate via the buttons on the left spoke. Now, talking about the spokes, the right spoke is weirdly empty. The reason for this is because you only have the audio track controls, the mode controls and the power button on this side. Because unfortunately, even in this advanced model, the Axia does not come with Prodoa Smart Drive Assist. You only get ASA 3.0, which includes things like autonomous emergency braking. Now, with pedestrian and cyclist detection, you also get things like lane departure warning and active lane keep assist, which helps to pull the car back in the lane should you stray. But but that is about it. I am glad, however, that despite all of this, at least it comes with blind spot monitoring, which I feel is a must have when you're talking about Malaysian cars, given the fact that we have a lot of motorcyclists. Now, another point I'd like to touch on are the seats, because these are actually the same seat designs out of the Prodoa Ativa, which means the seat squabs themselves are nice and long and they are very supportive and you do have a pretty decent amount of side bolstering to keep you in place. Now, in this advanced model, we do get a faux leather and sort of suede like fabric, which I think, again, does feel rather upmarket because this fabric feels really high quality a bit more than you'd expect from a car at this price point and because it is fabric it does help hold you into the seat that said if you do want a full faux leather cover you can get that via the Prodoa gear up accessories pack in terms of practicality there are plenty of cubby holes in this car with a couple of cup holders here bottle holders in the door more space here around the manual handbrake uh, which unfortunately also means this car does not come with auto hold. And there's this little shelf here, which is just the right size to hold the phone. Unfortunately, as I mentioned earlier, because this car does not come with Android Auto, I've ended up propping my phone in there in order for me to get Waze. And the trouble with that is the 12 volt socket lives back here, which means that if you were to put in a plug back there, you won't be able to lean your phone on it anymore, which I think is a little bit annoying. And Talking about annoyances, there really aren't that many USB ports in here. There is only one 
up here and that's it. If you want any more, you'll have to get one of those little USB socket type things to go in the 12 volt socket and at the back you have nothing at all. Which again, I think is a little bit weird. And speaking of the rear, there is plenty of space, although the rear seat scops are a little bit low, but because the seats themselves are mounted quite high, it's very easy to find a comfortable seating position. And of course, even though this car is smaller than the Myvi, thanks to that longer wheelbase, you do get a good amount of knee room and headroom in the rear. You do, of course, get isofix mounts and the rear doors open rather wide, so it should be easy for you to mount a bulky rear-facing child seat. Now, we have covered almost all there is to cover in here, which means the only le thing left to talk about is the drive. And while we still have the same one-litre three-cylinder that we've seen before, it is now paired to Prodoa's DCVT Automatic, which Prodoa says not only increases fuel economy, but has also made an improvement in performance. So, shall we? Now, quite a few quarters have suggested that the new Axia is such a good car that it renders the Myvi obsolete. Now, I'm here to tell you that they are lying. Now, the reason for that is because while the Axia has made significant gains in many areas, there are also plenty of areas where it simply could not be able to keep up with the larger car. So, for starters, out here on the motorway, I'm doing about 80, 90 kilometers an hour, and the amount of wind and road noise coming into the cabin, actually wind noise is fine, but the amount of road noise coming into the cabin is quite significant. And as a result, it does make me think about the Prodo MyV and its slightly quieter driving profile. Now, that said, however, in terms of comfort, the Axia is pretty much on par. Thanks to that longer wheelbase, the car has now more suspension distance and time basically in order to deal with primary and secondary bumps and as a result it does mean that this car cruises pretty comfortably in fact it cruises very very well for a car within this segment i certainly wouldn't have expected it to be quite this resolved you do still however feel very small when you're next to a truck though some things don't change also, it's on the motorway where I feel that the Axia actually does a little bit better. The reason for this is because when you're at a cruise between 80 to 90 kilometers an hour, everything in this car is relatively hushed. The steering wheel is very well weighted. You don't really hear much of the engine. There's very few vibrations through the cabin. And it's a place where if you drive very, very sensibly, you can do quite a few miles in this car without complaint. But it's in town where you would expect the Axia to be at its strongest where I feel it tends to show up its weaknesses. Firstly, it comes from that engine. So the 1 litre 1 kr VE engine in this is now mated to a DCVT automatic gearbox. In fact, this is the only transmission that you can get with the new Axia. And unfortunately, this engine under strain does sound quite loud and it is quite raucous. In fact, if I just drop a little further behind from this lorry that I'm tailing, and floor it, you can hear just how vocal this engine can be. And worse still than the noise is the fact that the vibrations come rattling through the cabin without even the slightest bit of hesitation. Now, of course, this is a matter of a 10 second annoyance because once you're up to speed, like I said, the car mutes and quietens down rather well. But when you're in town where you're constantly going through stop-start traffic, you are going to hear that irritation quite often. And of course, when you're stopped, it's not like things get better either. Because the way this engine has been tuned, when it idles, it seems to hit the right resonance with the rest of the chassis. And as a result, the vibrations through the car are rather pronounced. So much so that if it's an extended stop, I tend to put my foot ever so slightly on the throttle just to raise the RPM slightly so that I don't have to deal with that vibration. It is that annoying. Now, to Prodoa's credit, they did add a stop-start system to this engine, which means that when you are at a stoplight, the engine shuts off and then there are no vibrations at all. But when you're stuck in traffic, stop-start isn't really going to help. What else doesn't help is, as I mentioned earlier, the fact that this car does not come with the full gamut of Prodoa Smart Drive Assist features because that also means that in the Axia, you have to drive yourself through traffic, which is a little bit annoying because, again, this is a city car. If it had PSDA, you wouldn't have to do that anymore. 
But I guess this is how Prodo differentiates its models because if you want the full gamut of safety features, you have to upgrade to a Prodo a MyV. And the thing about the Axia is that the gap between this and the top spec MyV is not as big as it used to be. Which means as I'm sat here in this car, because yes, everything is adequate, everything does exactly as you expect, and there is nothing in here to surprise me. In fact, there is nothing in here that I distinctly do not like. But knowing that the MyV is, if I get a 1.3, the same price, or even if I want the full spec 1.5 advance, it really isn't that much money every month off, I might as well go and get a MyV. I get a four cylinder engine, I get more power, I get more safety features. I mean, why wouldn't I? But as I said very early on in this review, the Axia is the entry level model, which means that for a lot of price sensitive buyers, this is perhaps the only pro door that they can afford. Upgrading may not be an option. And when you look at it through those lenses, the Axia does make a lot of sense. This car is miles better than the vehicle that it replaces. Every single thing that you interact with in here has been markedly improved over the outgoing car. And so it certainly feels like it does justify the expense slightly. And for those decrying Prodoer's increase in price and saying that it will price out a lot of these very sensitive buyers, Prodoer does offer Prodoer pre-owned cars or POV where you can get a lightly used Prodoa that has been thoroughly inspected with Prodoa service history at a much more affordable price. So it's not like those buyers don't have options. They do, and they're still a Prodoa, which means you still get to enjoy the same sort of service quality and reliability and dependability that this brand has become very famous for. So all told, will I recommend a Prodoa Axia? Absolutely. If you're looking for a town car that's very, very good on fuel, because admittedly this car is still doing about 20 litres per 100 kilometres, despite my driving on the motorway, and you want something that you know you can depend on day in and day out, very few cars come quite close to the Prodoa Axia. Plus, its very diminutive dimensions means that it's easy to thread through traffic and park anywhere. And because this car is affordable to maintain, you really don't have to worry about a few dings and scratches along the way. This is a car that you are meant to abuse. And if you do, you will discover that actually this is a pretty rewarding experience because this is all the car that you really need. See, that had to come through my Bluetooth. I wish that came through my Android Auto instead. But... If you feel like you need a car that will support a growing family, if you find that over the next few years you may end up adding more members to your family or you just need a little bit more practicality, then you may be better served by a Prodoa MyV because at a price like this, you can afford the 1.3X with ASA, which is arguably the model that I recommend most of all. But ultimately, the Prodoa Axia fulfills its brief. If you want something that is affordable, if you want something that is relatively remarkable for the price, if you want a car that is good value, then the Prodoa Axia is very, very, very hard to beat. In any case, that has been our full review of the Prodoa Axia. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell icon so you're notified every time we make a new upload. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. All the links are in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Take care, stay safe and jangan bodoh.